All right, good morning, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for tuning in to this week's uh, e-lecture series lecture. Uh, we have a fantastic speaker today. We're very excited to have him uh, come talk to us, but first we'll begin with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, a reminder, this uh, webinar is meant for educational purposes only. All of the interactive features for attendees have been disabled to ensure optimal quality. Um, if you have any questions, uh, the only way to get questions to the speaker at the end for a Q&A session will be to uh, email this email address, emerymskradiology at gmail.com. He has agreed to do a Q&A session at the end. If you raise your hand in the Zoom uh, platform or you try to do chat, none of this will get through. So if you have questions, you must email this email address and we will address your questions as they come in. Um, we will record uh, this video and upload it to the YouTube channel along with the other videos. Um, a reminder, attendees have not been given permission to screen record this talk or any of the talks um, as there may be material which is under copyright. Unauthorized recording, use, distribution, and sale of this material without permission from the speaker is illegal. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over now to Dr. Ampierrez, um, our section chief, who's going to do the introduction for the speaker today. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. As uh, Adam mentioned, we have a fantastic speaker today that comes from Spain, and he's very well known uh, for his lectures, which are very didactic. And personally, what I am most impressed is, you know, his anatomical correlation and his drawings. He has a fantastic um, uh, people working with him. Uh, Luis Ceresal is the director of Diagnostico Medico of Cantabria in Santander, Spain. He went to medical school in Spain in Oviedo University, and he did his residency in the hospital in Santander. He, uh, in 2017, he received his PhD from Cantabria University, and his thesis was in MR in the evaluation of triangular fibrocartilage complex injuries with arthroscopic correlation. And you will see in this lecture how much he's gonna teach us uh, about it. He's an author of more than 80 articles, 35 book chapters, two books, and has been invited to lectures all around the world. His research currently efforts and focus on arthrography of the joint, mainly wrist and hip. Uh, I, uh, outside his um, radiology expertise in musculoskeletal, he loves uh, to travel. Uh, now he's tied to uh, his house. Uh, he loves soccer and he is a good historian. So without further, uh, I wanna uh, move the uh, screen to him and we can start um, uh, learning his knowledge. Luis. You can do it now. Thank you, Monica. Uh, yeah. It's okay, no? Perfect. Uh, first, first of all, I, I, I want to thank you uh, for this kind invitation, mainly to them. Uh, Monica, it's a, for me a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. And uh, remember that uh, all the arthroscopic and surgical images are from Dr. Paco Pignal, one of the bull references, references in uh, Ruiz Arthroscopy. It's a very good film. And we have a very uh, a permanent relationship. Um, injuries of the DFC complex uh, represent uh, one of the most common causes of ulnar restrain and disability. Remember that ulnar restrain is the most common clinical scenario of the risk, and the diagnosis and treatment of such lesions is uh, challenging. In this lecture, we will review uh, the anatomy of the DFC complex, the classification, uh, the Palmer classification, and the other injuries not included in Palmer classification of the TFC injuries. And we will review clinical aspect, uh, imaging assessment and arthroscopic management of uh, uh, TFC injuries. We will move to anatom anatomy. The TFC is composed of the TFC proper, a triangular fibrocartilage uh, in the central portion, the dorsal and radiolar ligaments that reinforce this uh, 
pyrocartilage in the bolar and dorsal aspect, respectively, the uh, meniscus homologue, um, the bolar radiolar ligaments. Here, the uno, uh, lunate and um, ulnotricator ligaments, and the subset of the stensor carpi ulnaris tendon. Uh, the most complicated anatomy of the PFC is the ulnar insertion in terms of evalu in imaging evaluation. Uh, it's very, uh, very complicated. There are two main ulnar attachments of the PFC. Uh, one on the styloid um, process and the most important uh, stronger one at the pubial insertion. This insertion is the most important in terms of distal radiolar joint stability because the fovea is the convergent point of insertion of the polar and dorsal radiolar ligaments, the stabilizers of the distal radiolar joint, and the palmar unocarpal ligaments, stabilizers mainly of the radiocarpal join. Uh, the poveal insertion play a key role in the stability, both of the, uh, uh, mainly the distal radial joint, but uh, also in the uh, stability of the unocarpal joints. These uh, two different uh, insertions are clearly demonstrated on MR, MR imaging. Uh, we can see perfectly the um, steroid and poveal insertion, and between we can see a zone with increased signal called um, ligamentary subcurrentin. Um, the unocarpal ligament complex is composed by the unocarpal, unolunate, unotricatral, and unocapitate ligaments that originate in the bolar aspect of the distal, uh, bolar uh, distal radial ligament and in the fovea, and distally inserts on the palmar aspect of the lunate, trucatum, and capitate bone, respectively. This uh, could be clearly seen in this, um, for example, this, this is the uh, lunotricator ligament clearly seen in this sagittal MRI image. You can see the central PFC, the, in, the uh, dorsal and bolar radiolar ligaments, and the lunotricator ligament. Also, in the coronal MRI image, we can see perfectly and, uh, the, the, all the triads of the the uh, unodricator ligament from the polar um, uh, radiounar ligament to the palmar aspect of the trucatum. The unomeniscal homologue uh, is a fibrofatty uh, structure located intimate, uh, closely related with the ulnar uh, capsule and subset of the uh, stensor carpium malis tendon. Um, back, um, Dr. Reznik described in a fantastic article on radiology uh, four different portions of the ulnomeniscal homologue the uh, radio ulnar, uh, uh, closely related with the dorsal, uh, 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 dorsal radio ulnar ligament. The most important one is the styloid, from the ulnar styloid to the trucatum, the collateral portion. And the distal insertion, distal insertion on the ulnar aspect of the trucatum, capitate, bone, and base of the uh, five metatarsal. The insertion of the tricot or the steroid portion of the ulnar meniscus homologue usually is a small in 90% of patients, but could be a broad, a broad insertion uh, in all the proximal aspect of the trucatum and even the, uh, the um, lunotricatron ligament. The on amorphography and especially, uh, especially on amorphography, we can perfectly see the different portions of the uh, meniscus homologue, uh, always in, in, uh, closely related with the ulnar capsule and the uh, stensor cartilinary tendon. We can see perfectly marked with uh, arrows the distal insertion in the um, ulnar aspect of the uh, trucatum, um, a mate bone, and uh, five metatarsal base. And this is um, a good correlation with the, with the drawing. The vascularization of the TFC is provided by uh, three, three branches, the ulnar artery and the palmar and dorsal branches of the anterior interosseous artery. These arteries supply the only the periphery 
of the TFC and the central portion, especially the, T the TFC proper, is completely avascular. And this is related with the possibilities that, uh, and, the, uh, and the surgical uh, treatments. It's very similar that, uh, that we know uh, on the knee uh, and the vascularization of the meniscus of the knee. It's a similar situation. The central uh, portion is not a, a vascularized, and the treatment should be um, uh, the brightening and the peripheral uh, portion vascularized could be uh, reinserted or unrepaired. Uh, what is the function of the TFC? The, T the main function of the TFC is the stability of the distal radial joint and secondarily the unocarpal joint. The distribution of load uh, between the ulna and ulnar carpus and to provide a smooth voice motion and forearm forearm rotation. Uh, TFC is uh, divided by Nakamura in two main portions. A proximal portion composed by the distal uh, radiolar ligaments and TFC proper, and a distal portion composed by the two main uh, structures, the ulocarpal ligaments and the uh, collateral, functional collateral ligament. Uh, for Naka, uh, Nakamura and others, the ulnar collateral ligament does not exist. There are not uh, specialized ulnar collateral ligament and they call a functional um, a medial collateral ligament of the radiocarpal joint, the conjoint of the ulnomeniscal homolog, uh, ulnar capsule, and subset of the stensor carpi ulnar stenum. In the diagnosis of uh, TFC, uh, injuries is very important the clinical examination. Usually, the patients are present with a characteristic ulnar wrist pain, and there are two main uh, uh, clinical signs at dissemination. Uh, the most reliable is the ulnar foveal sign that consists uh, 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 in to pro pro provoke uh, um, ulnar wrist pain uh, uh, to pinpoint that uh, in the ulnar capsule immediately, if, uh, immediately um, uh, palmar to the extensor carpulonary stendon, like we can see in this video. Especially, the pain is exacerbated with forearm rotation. This is the point of tenderness in the patient with, ulnar, with, with the, the TFC tears. Another important uh, clinical examination is the development test. It's that test uh, that uh, uh, tests specifically the, uh, the distal radial joint stability. Uh, the examiner try to move uh, passively the anterior posterior, uh, made an anterior posterior translation of the wound on the radius uh, in neutral rotation, but also in full supination and pronation. Abnormal translation of the ulnar head in the radius indicates distal radial ulnar joint instability, like in this uh, examination under anesthesia in a patient with a complete ulnar detachment of the TFC, of course. Uh, uh, imagine diagnosis should uh, start always with a conventional radiography, posterior, anterior, and lateral radiographies. Usually we can see, sometimes we can see fractures of the distal radius, the ulnar acyloid, or we can see the stabilities of the distal radiolar joint, and also, like in the, uh, the right image, image, you can see a positive ulnar variance and signs of uh, chronic ulnocarpal attachment. But uh, the imaging method of choice in the diagnosis of TFC injuries and in the differential diagnosis of ulnar wrist pain is uh, MR imaging. CT arthrography or um, MR arthrography could be useful in several specific situations that we will review in this lecture. Um, this is a common problem in our practice, in our daily practice. We can see um, MRI and we have problems to determine if the ulnar insertion is broken or not. Uh, this is a partial term of the ulnar insertion of the TFC, palmar class 1B, or, or it's a normal patient. Maybe a half of, uh, of us could, uh, could think that this is a term, a, a half or others uh, say that it's a normal 
PFC. And this is the problem. When the risk coil is placed along same, alongside the patient in a uh, upright position, in a vertical position, the steroid process is dorsally located, this is supination, and produce an atomic distortion of the PFC and is really, really very difficult to make an, an adequate diagnosis of palmar class 1 B lesion. This is a, a completely normal patient with a wrong position of the wrist and the wrist coil. This is very easy to solve. If we make the wrist coil, a specific wrist coil, uh, alongside the pa patient with a palm down in a horizontal position, we can see in this axial image the, uh, the, um, the steroid is completely aligned with the radial steroid and the coronal images show us perfectly both the steroid and phobia insertion clearly, even in patient like in the right patient with a fracture, acute fracture of the ulnar steroid. This is a technical, a very common and te technical problem that make it very difficult an adequate diagnosis of uh, PFC injuries. Remember that this position in, it's, for, for me, is my favorite uh, examination is to perform this, this uh, position in, in Superman, because uh, maybe it's uh, not very comfortable for the patient, but it's better for the um, examination, for the quality of examination. The gold standard in arthroscopic is, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the diagnosis and management of um, PFC injuries is arthroscopy. Remember that most of the arthroscopic procedures are performed using radiocarpal and midcarpal portals. This radiocarpal arthroscopy is not performed purely because it's technically demanding and is uh, very uh, limited in, the, in, in the, uh, both in the diagnosis and in the treatment of um, this radionary joint problems. Dry arthroscopy introduced by Paco Pignal without uh, fluid in the, into the joint improved both the diagnosis and treatment of the Ruiz disease and in particular, the diagnosis of PFC injuries. There are two very important maneuvers in the evaluation uh, at arthroscopy of the PFC. The trampoline test that evaluates the tension of the TFC. The test is positive when the TFC is soft and compliant, indicating a TFC tear. This is a normal TFC with a normal tension in all parts of the TFC. Another very useful test on arthroscopy is the hook test that evaluates specifically for BL abortion, non-communicating tears of the TFC very difficult to diagnose for, uh, even in arthroscopy because they, we, they can see an other part of the PFC. And this test consists in of applying traction on the most border of the PFC with the proof and is considered positive when the arthroscopies uh, could lift uh, distally and radially the PFC. This is an indirect sign of a partial tear affecting the phobia of the TFC. In the classification of the TFC, we use the Palmer classification. This is a widely and generally, generally accepted classification. It's a, a fantastic tool for communication, for an effective communication between orthopedic and radiologists. Uh, Palmer in 1989 divided the, the uh, TFC injuries in Palmer class one uh, or traumatic injuries and class two degenerative injuries. The traumatic class one injuries are also subdivided in four, uh, in four types based on location. Type 1A is a central split, split affecting the TFC proper, respecting both the dorsal and molar radiolunar ligaments. This is an unstable injury without distal radiolunar joint instability. The Palmer class 1B is also a very common injury affecting in, uh, is a invariable degree the ulnar insertion of the TFC. Palmer class 1C is a very rare injury affecting the uh, unocarpal ligaments. It is a, unocar uh, a carpal detachment of the unocarpal ligaments. 
uno lunatan, uno tricotal, especially. And Palmer class 1D is described initially by Palmer like uh, as a complete abortion of the radial insertion of the TFC. This is uh, a Palmer class 1A lesion. Uh, this is a MRI, it's, um, it's very sensitive and specific for this type of injuries. You can see on the left, a normal dorsal radiolar ligament and the right, a normal bola radiolar ligament. And in the two central images, we can see a, a tear of the TFC proper. It's an stable lesion because the dorsal and bola radiolar ligament are respected. We can see also this injury very clearly in this sagittal MR imaging and the dolar, dorsal and bolar radiolar ligament respect. Maybe uh, the best uh, plan to understand this injury is the axial one. You can see the dorsal, the dorsal, the bolar radiolar ligaments and the, the split of the central portion of the TFC. This is a correlation with arthroscopy. This is an stable lesion and the treatment affect an avascular central TFC and the treatment should be uh, the brightening of this unstable injury. Even uh, in patients with this aspect of longitudinal, you know, very, very, um, very thin injuries, the treatment is arthroscopic debridement. This is the result after arthroscopic debridement of the unstable central uh, injury of this uh, TFC. Palmer class 1B are, is a very common injury, and uh, there are a lot uh, of uh, several, uh, there are several subtypes described very well for Paco Pinal and Andrea Say, depending on the injury of the steroid insertion, the foveal insertion, or both, and also the combination with several process or fractures of the, uh, of the ulnar steroid. This is a very difficult diagnosis in general for the complex anatomy uh, to diagnose on MRI the Palmer class 1B. We are uh, forced to do the things very well to make a good diagnosis of these injuries. This is a Palmer class 1B injury affecting only the foveal insertion. The foveal insertion is very important in terms of stability. Remember that is a conjoint point of insertion of the unocarpal and distal radial ligaments. And in this patient, we can see a complete tear of the foveal insertion and the steroid insertion respected. Another indirect sign of this injury that indicates that this is a moderate uh, secondary instability is the dorsal subluxation in the axial images of the ulnar head. Remember the um, uh, hook test uh, to, the, to uh, diagnose uh, um, this kind of injuries. The, uh, when we have uh, problems to diagnose this kind of, this type of injuries, the most effective uh, way to uh, make a perfect diagnosis is to, to do uh, a distal radiolar joint hemorrhography. Uh, this is a distal radiolar hemorrhography, the initial part of all of our hemorrhography uh, examinations. And we can see in this uh, professional tennis player, very well known in the two years ago, uh, a, a complete tear of the foveal insertion at the steroid insertion respected without communication. There are no uh, contrasts in the radiocarpal compartment. And you can see this, uh, this um, tear clearly on T1, T1 with uh, fat suppression, and also uh, this is very clear in the sagittal images. This is another patient with a ulnar strain and a moderate distal radial joint instability. And we can see both uh, coronal and T1 and coronal T1 fat sat uh, MRography images, uh, abortion with a, a small fragment of bone uh, from the phobia and abortion of the foveal insertion. This uh, injury should not be confused with and osteangular, that is an, an, uh, a very well known anatomic variation. When we have a severe process of fractures of the ulnar steloid, the diagnosis of Palmer class 1B is sometimes very difficult, like in this central image. We need uh, a very good 
good position, position of the rates, and we need especially um, a very uh, specific risk coil and a very good magnet. We can, in this case, it's very easy to show uh, both the steloid and uh, fovean insertion completely normal. If we have uh, any depth of uh, of the of this uh, of the positive of this injury, it's very easy to perform this calvarionar joint MR therapy, like in this case, and we see a complete tear of the TFC uh, at the ulnar and the fovean insertion and the steroid insertion respectively. The treatment in these patients consists on ulnar steroid resection and arthroscopic or combined open and arthroscopic fovea TFC reinsertion. The steroid is uh, tear, non communicating tears affecting only the steroid, the steroid insertion are not uh, are a pain syndrome. We have pain related to synovitis, but we, uh, we usually we don't have, we, we don't uh, often have uh, instability, disturbing or instability. This is a number of photographies showing a tear and the arthroscopic correlation, the tear affecting only the steroid insertion and in the cook test, the foveal insertion is um, completely normal. The treatment in these cases, the superficial TFC to the capsule with a very good results in this case. This is another example in this case, in an acute fracture of the distal ratus and uh, ulnar steroid, and we can see the uh, foveal insertion completely normal and a pair of the steroid insertion. The treatment in these cases is similar to the previous uh, cases uh, shown. When we have a complete tear of the TFC, a Palmer class 1B uh, complete, we have a communication. This is an morphography where we can see an extensive communication between distal radiolunar joint and radiocarpal compartment. And this is very clear. Um, conventional MRI even and uh, of, um, even better in, on MRI and remember a secondary important sign is the dorsal subluxation of the ulnar head indicating marked distal radiolar joint instability. The treatment in the acute or acute cases with a normal vascularized TFC is the arthroscopic assisted reinsertion of the TFC at the fovea. This is uh, the completer, and the, uh, uh, this is the arthroscopic procedure with reinsertion uh, uh, combined uh, open, mini open, and arthroscopic reinsertion uh, of the TFC at the fovea. And this is the development test indicating a, a massive uh, instability and the results after arthroscopic retouchment of the TFC at the fovea. Remember that uh, the, in the distal radio fracture, we have several very common associated injuries. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, scaphalonate ligament injuries, but also fracture of the uh, ulnar steloid or the ulnar head and TFC injuries. If this is a case of a patient treated with a distal radio fracture with a polar plate, with a fantastic um, recovery of the surface of the uh, of the radius, but we have an um, intensive ulnar wrist pain. And what is the origin of this ulnar wrist pain? We have a complete detachment of the fovea insertion uh, of the TFC. And this is very clearly shown this uh, conventional MR imaging. Palmer class 1C uh, is a traumatic injury affecting the unocarpal ligaments, the unolunate and unotripetal ligaments. This is a carpal detachment of this ligament. This is a very, very rare injury. Uh, only few cases, I have only few cases with arthroscopic correlation. And this is the coronal and sagittal images showing the uh, abortion of the unotripetal ligament and the hemorrhography correlation. Another variant of Palmer class 1C is the longitudinal split of the lunotripetal ligament. This is uh, also a, a very uncommon injury and, and it's very difficult to diagnose on, on, on MR. We need to make a special attention to uh, ulnocarpal ligament, mainly 
and the sagittal images that we can see the complex, the, the, uh, the, all the triads from the origin of the bolar aspect of the bolar radiolar ligament to the dorsal to the bolar aspect of the pipetrum. Palmer class 1D injuries are originally described by Palmer as a complete abortion of the radial insertion of the TFC, but arthroscopic um, uh, studies show that it's a very uncommon injury and it's more, most common to, to, to find another variance or, or another subtypes of this injury, especially after affecting only the insertion the radial insertion of the uh, TFC proper, respecting the dorsal and bolar radiolar ligaments, and there are stable injuries. We can have also injuries of the TFC proper associated with dorsal or bolar radiolar ligaments, and in the case of the dorsal radiolar ligament, it could be also a fracture abortion at the radial insertion. And of course, we could, we could have a complete abortion of the TFC, but it's very, very uncommon. This is the most common type of Palmer class 1D injury. We can see a complete tear of the insertion, radial insertion of the TFC in the central image, but on the left and the right MR images, we can see the dorsal and bolar radiolar ligament respected. And this is also very well uh, shown in this axial image with the dorsal and bolar radiolar ligaments completely normal, and this split affecting the, all the insertion of the, of the TFC on the radius. Complete tears is not no, no, of, the, of the insertion of the TFC on the radius is not common, but uh, when it occurs are characterized, like in this case, with a marked distal radiolar instability, similar to the complete injuries of the, uh, uh, and also similar to the uh, foveal injuries of the ulnar side. There are a lot, uh, several, several infection syndromes uh, causing ulnar wrist pain, and the most common one is the uh, ulnocarpal infection uh, uh, syndrome. It's a degenerative condition uh, resulting from repetitive infection between the ulnar head and the TFC and ulnar carpus. Uh, these injuries are, uh, these uh, progressive injuries are included as Palmer class two injury or degenerative injuries of the TFC. Uh, most commonly occur in patients with positive ulnar variants, but we can see also in patients with neutral or negative variants. And what is the reason? The reason is that the ulnar variance is a measure performed in uh, standardized uh, anterior posterior uh, X ray and refers to relative lengths of the distal articular surface of the radius and ulna. We call positive ulnar variants when the ulnar. Uh, ulnar is lower than the radius, neutral when the both lengths are the same, and neutral and negative when uh, the ulnar, ulnar distal ulnar is shorter than the radius. But this is uh, relative because it's an aesthetic um, evaluation, and uh, we don't live in, in a static manner. This is my own risk. This is an image from um, an article uh, at the radiographics, a uh, very old article. And I have a small uh, positive variance, maybe one millimeter of positive variance. And I have a um, massive space for the TFC. But if I perform um, for a um, pronation and a uh, forceful grip of the wrist, the things change, change completely. I have a marked positive ulnar variance, a small uh, space, only a small space for the uh, um, TFC, and this is the reason uh, for a um, patient with neutral or even negative bias could have uh, a ulocarpal infection. Uh, these uh, degenerative injuries of the TFC begin at the proximal aspect uh, of the TFC in contact with the ulnar dome, the, is the, at the distal radular joint um, compartment. Uh, the, there are five progressive uh, the stages. The stage 2A is a frying and thinning of the central portion without perforation. 2B is uh, uh, more thinning and frying of the proximal aspect associated with ulnar head condomalacia. 
uh, stage to see is um, additional chondromalacia in the ulnar aspect of the lunate and central perforation of the DHC. Palmer class 2D is an important step, in, especially in terms of uh, planification of the treatment. It's the same uh, perforation and more extensive uh, chondromalacia and a tear of the lunotricateral limb. And this associated lunotricateral instability make the diagnosis, the, 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 the treatment more difficult. And finally, we have an a stage 2E A with a, a complex, um, uh, with a massive uh, the, the, the degenerative changes of the ulnar carpus. Remember that uh, the initial stages of the degenerative injuries of the DFC are usually asymptomatic and it's very common to to found uh, this uh, kind of injuries in patients with completely asymptomatic for this reason. This is a very nice example of Palmer class 2B with a fragging and irregularities of the, in the proximal distal radiolar joint aspect of the TFC and uh, uh, chondromalacia with a great um, big focus of chondromalacia on the ulnar head, stage 2B. This is the typical sample of, uh, of Palmer class 2C with uh, extensive perforation of the T central TFC and chondromalacia on the ulnar aspect of the lunate with secondary changes, cysts and sclerosis and sometimes edema. This is a Palmer class 2T. This is uh, very complicated in terms of diagnosis and even more complicated in terms of uh, treatment. We can see the perforation, extensive perforation, chondromalacia, and a tear of the lunotricateral ligament with a break in the gerula arc one. And what is the treatment of these degenerative injuries? Uh, remember that some of them are completely asymptomatic and should not be treated when uh, the patient has an important uh, mm, uh, uh, ulnar risk pain, not um, uh, without um, uh, without good results with the uh, uh, conventional treatments, we need to, to perform a, a surgical treatment. In this case, Palmer class 2B and class 2C are the, 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 the um, uh, treatment uh, of elation is the uh, arthroscopic workflow procedure after the brightening of the central TFC, we can see the chondromalacia of the on the ulnar head, on the bowler ulnar aspect of the ulnar head, and the uh, warfare procedure consists of removing arthroscopically uh, two or three millimeters of this part of uh, ulnar head. This is the treatment on, on dry arthroscopy. And this is the result as uh, this is the um, this uh, MR uh, coronal uh, proton density MR image. So the central uh, perforation of the TFC, the, the, the braided, and also the removing of the distal pole of the ulnar dome. And when we have a Palmer class 2D, the treatment is completely different. Uh, usually the treatment consists on um, ulnar sap shortening osteotomy in order to reinforce the ulnocarpal ligaments, the ulnotricateral and ulnolunate ligament uh, are reinforced and also the ulnar capsule and provide some stability to the lunotricateral joint. Uh, recent advances on uh, race arthroscopy and imaging methods have shown that there are um, very commonly um, injuries that not, could not be included in the conventional Palmer classification, classification. We have called these injuries non-Palmer injuries, and we have systematized these injuries in central injuries, peripheral lesions, and combined injuries uh, or, um, combina with combination of traumatic or degenerative injuries in the same patient. This is uh, an example of horizontal tear, a central uh, non palmar injury, this injury is very similar to the horizontal degenerative injuries of the meniscus of the knee, and even is very common, commonly associated with ganglia, like in this case. 
and the treatment is similar to the pre, uh, to the degenerative injury to, or, or palmar class to see injury with um, arthroscopic debridement and sometimes with a uh, water procedure. This is another central non palmar injury. It's a bucket handle tear. There are an horizontal flap of the TFC proper with a fragment on fall medially. And this is the, uh, a more arthrographic um, examination on coronal and sagittal, clearly seen this, um, this uh, uh, stable flap. And this is the arthroscopic correlation. This is the stable flap, horizontal flap, very similar also to some uh, uh, injuries uh, or, or the meniscus of the knee. Um, uh, image method uh, uh, MR and especially MR therapy are very important in diagnosis of tears of the TFC affecting the proximal aspect, is, uh, the proximal aspect related to the distal radiolar uh, compartment. In this case, we can see a flap, an horizontal flap uh, hanging on the distal radiolar joint recess. And this is very important because it's completely impossible to see this injury unconventional MR uh, arthroscopy. And very clearly, uh, so in this, both in coronal uh, CT MR arthrography and in the coronal sagittal MR arthrography images. This is an uh, injury uh, um, that uh, provokes ulnar wrist pain. And also in this case, we have uh, snapping and um, um, spronosupination limitation. The peripheral non palmar injuries, the most common, are described by Paco Pinal and are capsular injuries, especially dorsal detachment of the TFC, dorsal detachment of the dorsal radiolar ligament from the capsule, or bolar uh, detachment of the TFC from the capsule, and also uh, an injury described by Nishikawa and called ulnar attachment, uh, that this is an abortion of the um, capsule and ulnar meniscal homologue from the dorsal trichetum. This is a very common injury, non-palmar peripheral injury, and we can see a dorsal detachment of the TFC, especially well seen in this sagittal uh, MR image. And remember, and on the axial image, we can see focal synovitis. Synovitis is a very uh, sensitive uh, um, um, course with a specific sign of problems. And in this case, this synovitis indicates a dorsal detachment of the TFC. This is the arthroscopic. This is a, this is um, female rock climber, and with uh, several um, MRIs reported as normal. And after uh, we receive this patient for an, a new MRI, and this is the arthroscopic correlation. We can see the center of TFC completely normal, but there are a detachment of the dorsal uh, radiolar ligament from the capsule. And the treatment of this patient is the uh, capsular attachment, all inside arthroscopic uh, reattachment uh, that was performed in this patient. Um, the results um, are really, really fantastic. After a long period of um, and wrong the diagnosis, this is the, um, the treatment, and this is the postoperative outcome. It's um, a normal uh, uh, athletic activity after a long period of, of problems. This is a um, motorcycle rider, and uh, in this case, we can see a focal synovitis uh, related to the bolar uh, radiolar ligament. And this is, a, uh, this is the same injury in the bolar aspect. It's a, to, a bolar detachment of the TFC. This is the arthroscopic correlation with the bolar disinsertion of the TFC. And the treatment is also uh, a capsular attachment with a arthroscopic all inside procedure. And this is the, the post-operative uh, outcome with a complete relief of symptoms and, uh, and a normal athletic activity and very demanding activity. Remember, uh, the uh, Nishikawa lesion um, is related with the other uh, injury described in the, in the literature by Watson. Uh, Till lesion is a 
tricetral impingement uh, ligament tear. And I think it's the same injury with uh, a, a small differences in the description by the, the two different uh, authors, but uh, uh, it represents an abortion or tear of the dorsal uh, capsule and ligaments, including uh, the, um, the uh, steloid portion of the meniscus homologue. This is a patient with ulnar wrist pain, a tennis player, and we can see a tear of the ulnar meniscal homologue, not only at the trichetal um, insertion, but also at the uh, uh, mate insertion, distal insertion of the TFC. These injuries are characterized by uh, uh, capsular and ulnar meniscal homologue detachment, and also by focal synovitis and fibrosis in the dorsal aspect of the ulnar trichetal ligament. And a very common finding related with this um, pathology is a um, patient with dorsal ulnar wrist pain is, uh, like in this case, uh, uh, chondral de uh, de uh, delamination in the dorsal aspect of the ulnar disc, an extensive chondral delamination related with this um, detachment of the ulnar tarsus. And this is another example. We can see edema in the dorsal aspect of the trichetrum. This, there is not an ulnar, ulnar steroid impaction. We can see the detachment of the uh, ulnar slim, capsular slim of the, in the dorsal aspect of the trichetrum, focal synovitis and edema related with this uh, peripheral non palmer injury. And we can have, finally, we can have combination of injuries. And this is very common to, to found a uh, combination of traumatic and degenerative injuries. This is a coronal tear described by Nakamura and Pinal, and it's a combination of central perforation of the TFC and a traumatic uh, splitting of the ulnar insertion, foveal insertion of the uh, distal radiolar ligament. This is the arthroscopic correlation. This is uh, the, the arthroscopic video after warfare procedure, and this is the treatment of the splitting of the at the phobia of the distal radial ligaments and in this patient with a very good result also. And this is some, another example of combined injuries. This is a patient with a Palmer class 2A injury with a positive ulnar variance, um, frying and thinning of the central portion of the TFC and after a traumatic event, we can see a complete detachment of the ulnar insertion. It's a combination of traumatic and degenerative injuries are very common as scenario. As a conclusion, um, uh, recent advances in arthroscopic and imaging, imaging uh, diagnosis have changed dramatically our, our understanding of TFC injuries. MR is the method, uh, the imaging method of choice and provides an accurate diagnosis of most uh, traumatic and degenerative injuries of the TFC. Remember that emerthoracy is indicated in a specific case to overcome several limitations of the conventional MRI, especially uh, to evaluate the ulnar insertion, mainly the foveal non-communicating injuries, Palmer class 1B partial non-communicating, and to diagnose Palmer class 1C. This is a very rare injury, of course, and it, it could be indicated in several, uh, in some cases to differentiate between class 2C and 2C, the, ligam, the lunar trichetal ligament is intact, intact or is broken because the treatment is completely different. And also I think uh, MRTography is the technique uh, of a, uh, uh, most important in the evaluation of peripheral non palmer TFC injuries previously described. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Remember, this is very near, uh, very close to my home. Uh, this is the Altamira paint, uh, cave paintings uh, in Santillana del Mar. Um, uh, my, my wife is from this, um, from this small town. And these paintings are from the Upper Paleolithic and have about 36,000 years of uh, old. And remember that uh, in, uh, the most, um, the older paintings in this uh, cave are related to Hannah Risk. Maybe it's, um, it's the, the cause of my interest in Risk imaging.
Um, uh, another uh, very important thing is that these paintings are performed by, by women. And this is my family. Uh, thank you. Gracias. Sorry for my English, but uh, I, I hope uh, the lecture um, so could be interesting for your, for your work. Thank you very much. Fantastic talk. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to switch over here. Uh, we did have some questions come in and I just wanted to put this up one more time just as a reminder. Um, a couple people raised their hands. If you have a question um, while we're going through these, um, please send an email to this email address, emorymskradiology at gmail.com and we will read off your questions. Um, so the first question that came in is, um, what is the relationship between the ulnotraquetral ligament and stability of the central foveal attachment of the TFCC? The ulnotraquetral and, and stability. The, yes, the, the ulnotraquetral ligament in, is originated in the boral aspect of the ulnotraquetral uh, or the distal radunal um, ligament. And this ligament finally is inserted at the fovea. And when we have a, a tear of the um, of the ulnotricator ligament and, and its proximal origin or, or insertion, we usually have a moderate distal radiolar uh, joint instability. If we have only a longitudinal injury of the ulnotricator ligament, we have a pain syndrome, a ulnar wrist pain without instability. We need to have instability to affect the insertion of the fovea of the uh, bola radiolar ligament. And the follow-up question there, um, in terms of injury to the onotroquitral uh, ligament, where do you typically see the injury mo more commonly, distal, proximal, mid-substance? In the onotroquitral? What, which ligament? Sorry, the onotroquitral. The onotroquitral. Uh, the, the most common injury of the ulnotricator for me is um, uh, an abulsion at the fovea at the, uh, with the, the bolar uh, radio, distal radiolar ligament. Um, it's very, very difficult to, to demonstrate on MRI. It's not, not a common injury, but it's very difficult to demonstrate or even on MRI photography the longitudinal injuries of the, this ligament. This ligament has do two holes to anatomic holes, one of them is related to pisotriticator joint, and another one is related to prestiloid recess, and is uh, predisposed to longitudinal injuries. But this uh, kind of injuries, uh, um, I repeat, is um, not related with the stability, related with, um, with ulnar wrist pain. And it's, uh, for me, I think uh, it's a um, limitation of, um, in most cases, of, um, of MR. Gotcha. Um, you know, it seems as though you do a lot of MRA. Um, one of the people asked, there have been several uh, reports you know, talking about the accuracy of MRA over MRI. Um, how do you feel about MRA uh, in terms of improving diagnostic accuracy? Yes, uh, I, I usually participate in the orthopedic and hand surgery meeting and they have, um, uh, sometimes uh, they show uh, no good experience with MRI. In our study, uh, um, it's part of my, my doctoral thesis and I, I, I need to publish, <laughs> I need to, to have time to publish. And we have um, um, more than 90% of uh, sensibility and specificity for most of the injuries of the TFC. We have a small limitation, but even the Palmer class 1B a partial affecting only the fovea or the ulnar stellar uh, very well diagnosis in conventional uh, MR imaging if we do the things well. And, um, and this in, in, in our country is very common that the uh, risk uh, uh, imaging is not very well performed. It's very important to have a good magnet, but it's even more important that, that a good magnet is to have a very good position of the risk. It's not possible to have a good, uh, uh, a good sensitivity or a good uh, re reliability of our imaging, imaging di diagnosis without a good position of the wrist on MR. On MR. 
Um, along those lines, uh, there was a question as to what uh, sequences you use for your risk protocol, and do you use 3D imaging, and if so, how heavily do you rely on it? Yeah, I use uh, proton, dense, proton density fat suppress in the three orthogonal planes and uh, with uh, two millimeters of uh, thickness, and you, uh, at least uh, um, axial and coronal T1 for uh, anatomic variants, uh, muscular, uh, etc. And I, I use a coronal uh, 3D sequence um, in T2 uh, echocardium because um, I, I have um, in the, the other sequences in 3, 3D are for me are not very good at, uh, in our matching. But uh, 3D T2 um, um echo decrading are is fantastic got it um how often do you see ecu instability in the setting of peripheral tfcc tears sorry how often do you see extensor carpial naris instability in the setting of peripheral tfcc tears yes very common very common because um uh, because tfc uh, extensor carpial naris the subset of the extensor carpial naris is uh, related, is intimately related, of, uh, is part, uh, important part of the TFC. And um, I, perf I do a lot of uh, ultrasound examination a day, maybe this, this afternoon at least uh, 40 examination, um, a, a good part of them uh, from, from the risk. And this is a, a, a is very standard the opinion that the ultrasound, uh, ultrasound is enough to evaluate uh, the essential carpulinaris for the dynamic capability. And this is true, but uh, the problem I prefer always MRI because um, so it's very common to have peripheral injuries, a capsular detachment of the dorsal aspect of the TFC associated with uh, subset injuries of the extensor carpulinaris, especially in tennis player, for example, when uh, I see a professional tennis player or a recreational tennis player, I prefer always to do both ultrasound and MRI. Fantastic, and that leads into the last question we had. Um, in terms of looking at ECU instability, uh, especially when using ultrasound, but also with MRI, you know, there's a, a dependency, I guess, in the position of the tendon um, when you're going between pronation and supination. Um, is there uh, a point of essentially no return where you feel like it's definitely outside of the normal anatomic position um, and to call it a, a subluxation or dislocation from the groove and say that there's a subsheath injury? Yes, the problem is that we, we I, I, I have, um, I, I, I like to ultrasound because Sometimes we, we have uh, um, subluxation of the uh, stensor carpal dynamic subluxation, uh, completely asymptomatic. And I think it, we need to correlate very well all the uh, imaging findings with the, with, with the clinical scenario. And it's very common to, to, to have um, luxation or subluxation of stensor carpal on ultrasound in completely asymptomatic patients or in patients with ulnar respite, no, no related with this instability, related with other problems of the ulnar uh, carpus. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That's the end of the questions we have for you. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. And uh, thank you to everyone else for coming in and watching. And we will upload this video uh, either later today or tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, All right. Stay safe. Good being